All right, we're going to pick it up where we left off this morning. So we're in Revelation 14, verses 6 and 7. Here the Word of God says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. And every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Father, I pray and ask, Lord, for your blessings now as we continue. Father, looking at this subject of the gospel, Lord, during the <coughs> entirety of time frame that is contained in the New Testament, Father, and the truth, the fact that there are four Gospels presented, Lord, at different times for different reasons. Lord, bless the message. Lord, let it go forth to your glory and honor and praise, and we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Now, I covered the first three this morning. We talked about the gospel of the kingdom, which was being preached first by John the Baptist, then by Jesus Christ himself, and then by his apostles right up through, uh, I usually say Acts 7, but really go to Acts 9 with that. Uh, the gospel is in transition at this point. We have the gospel of the grace of God, okay, which Acts 10 is where this clearly begins at this point when the Holy Spirit of God cuts Peter off <laughs> in the middle of his preaching and he comes in and gives the new birth to the Gentiles who are there with Cornelius in his home and indwells them and to prove the fact to the Jews that are present has them speak in tongues as a sign to the Jews so that they come to understand that God is offering salvation by grace through faith in Jesus Christ to all people. But they don't have a full revelation of everything that's going on as of yet. And that's when we come into Paul's gospel, which is salvation by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to all peoples, but it includes mysteries that they didn't know, that they weren't aware of, that they had been blinded to, uh, the imputation okay, of righteousness, justification, reconciliation, adoption, sanctification, glorification, uh, you know, these things are what are going on, and then we have the seven mysteries there, the mystery, okay, of godliness, okay, that God became a man, okay, and then we have, you know, Christ in you, the height, the hope of glory, uh, again, that was 1 Timothy 3.16, mystery of godliness, Colossians 1.27, for the next, Christ in the church, the relationship between Jesus Christ and the church, Ephesians 5.32 okay? the deliberate blindness and eventual salvation of the nation of Israel Romans 11.25 Mystery Babylon which is Revelation <laughs> Revelation 17.5 yeah, I'm like, right next to each other there so two R's and so when my, my poor brain works Mystery of Iniquity Okay, already at work, okay, the Antichrist, 2 Thessalonians 2, 2 through 8, and then the Blessed Hope, which is also in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, uh, yeah, but 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 55 is where the Blessed Hope is specifically mentioned. Okay. These are all things that were given to Paul. Paul, in turn, gives them to the apostles in Jerusalem and they received those revelations after his time spent in the Arabian desert. Many of the disciples there 
refuse and reject those truths and go out and try to corrupt the New Testament churches. And so Paul and Silas and Timotheus go up again 14 years later to Jerusalem to see the apostles. And the apostles confirm what Paul has been preaching to the Gentiles and send out letters to the Gentile churches uh, to support that and tell them to ignore these men because we didn't send them out with that. And so, yes, Paul was preaching something that Peter initially was not preaching. Paul was preaching something that Jesus Christ was not preaching. Why was Jesus Christ not preaching it? Because he was offering the kingdom to Israel. There was a purpose behind all of this. Now, the preacher whose statements prompted this message, you know, again, he made the statement that there's only one gospel because it's the same Holy Spirit that gave the gospel to Jesus Christ and gave the gospel to Peter and gave the gospel to, to uh, the apostles and, and to Paul. Uh, so, if you're going to follow that line of thinking, it's the same Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit didn't suddenly appear, uh, you know, at the New Testament. <laughs> okay, he is a part of the Trinity, part of the Godhead. Okay, uh, you know, and again, he's he would be saying claiming that this gospel of the kingdom, okay, is the same gospel because again, it's the Holy Spirit of God who gave it. Well, following that logic, then the Holy Spirit gave the gospel to Adam and Eve. And would have given the gospel to Cain and Abel. And would have given the gospel to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his twelve boys, and the Moses, and Aaron, and Joshua, and on, and on, and on, and on. This is the same Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, and these are the same folks that teach the fact that Old Testament saints look forward to the cross. You know, as we look back at the cross. Now, nobody, nobody who has truly studied the Bible with any kind of serious whatsoever no they know that's simply not the case you can't okay salvation by grace through faith and the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Old Testament under the law of Moses okay that kind of sloppy ignorant theology I'm sorry it plainly takes a special kind of stupid that's all there is to it. <laughs> that takes a special kind of stupid. Okay, for somebody who's been saved for decades, been in the pulpit for decades, has had the same word of God available to him that I have. And okay, and y'all know I ain't no bright bulb for sure. To make those kind of statements. How can you do that? You know, and, and like I say, some folks that will hear this are going to get mad at me. Well, fine. Get mad at me. Tell me I'm mean-spirited. I'm mad, okay? I'm mad. I am sick and tired of men who have been pastors, like I say, in some cases for decades, standing up publicly in the pulpit and repeating lies. But Paul saying Galatians, okay? Anybody preaches another gospel than that which I gave to you, let him. Wait, you think Paul was kidding when he said that? Guess who inspired him to save that? I mean, they're either just plain stupid or they're telling lies, deliberately and knowingly telling lies. You know, and they either need to get right with God and come out and say publicly, I'm wrong, or they need to get out of the pulpit and quit being a snake <clears throat> serving Satan. You know, the same ones that are going to sit there during this time of year and mush and coo over the Roman Catholic Mass on the 25th of December. I've heard so much of that now in the last week. You know, it's like one more preacher gets up there and starts, you know, defending 
this same fella, well, I've heard all the arguments against it, and I agree with some of them, but, here comes the, yeah, his big but, uh, I don't see any, well, look, okay, some folks maybe who didn't grow up as Roman Catholics and grow up with the lies that I grew up with. And growing up under a do-or-die religion that gave me no hope of ever getting to heaven when I've got every hope of getting to heaven. I'm sorry, anything that comes out of the Roman Catholic Church, as far as I'm concerned, is tainted with the hell of the devil. And I'm going to stand up and fight against it every bit that I can. Folks can get mad. I'm mad. <laughs> I'm mad. I mean, again, they're either poor students of the scriptures. You know, when it comes to that, you know, I mean, I just spent time with you this morning, okay, and Sunday school, showing you from the scriptures when Jesus Christ was actually born. Okay, so you're either a poor student of the scriptures or you don't believe what the Bible says. So don't sit here and tell me you're a Bible believer. Okay. You know, like I showed you all this morning in Sunday school, you can't, you're, you can't get within two months of the date that the Bible gives us in the Christ Mass of the Roman Catholic Church. There's no way you can reconcile those two dates. You can't do it. Their problem is they're in love with the traditions and with the loop that's associated with the 25th of December. That's what that is. You know, you need to be honest. You know, if they can't see by looking at the scriptures, you know, the clear distinction between the first three gospels and why they existed why they continue, in one case, to exist. You know, why are you, why are you so blind? Why are you so blind? But we're going to address the last one here. It's found in, again, we read Revelation 14, 6 and 7, the everlasting gospel. And the everlasting gospel is proclaimed by a heavenly angel. Now, there are angels that are not heavenly, and they're Satan's angels. This is a heavenly angel. He travels through the sky to all the inhabitants of the earth. All the inhabitants of the earth. Uh, go to Galatians again, 1, 6 through 12. Galatians 1, 6 through 12. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you. Okay, who's he talking about? Those same Jews that we were talking about there that came up in Acts 15. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you that would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed as we said before so say I now again if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received let him be accursed the everlasting gospel is certainly another gospel when compared to Paul's gospel okay? and it's being proclaimed by an angel from heaven okay? so if it's legitimate Okay, it cannot be the same gospel as was preached during the church age. And it is a legitimate gospel. Okay. Okay, the, these two scriptural passages exist for a reason. It's not some coincidence. They're there so that you see that and you see and you compare them and you realize, okay. If this is the inspired word of God, 
And we've got a different gospel going. Okay. What's going on here? Okay. It's supposed to cause you to want to think and research and to learn. Not gloss it over and say, oh, it's all the same thing. Well, that, that is, you know, incredibly sloppy, despicable theology. Context. Oh, what's the context? Where are we? We're in the tribulation. We're in Jacob's trouble. Church is gone. Okay? We left. Okay? We have departed. You know, we know from our many previous studies on this subject, seven year period, salvation during tribulation period, faith and works. Why? Because God's gone back to dealing with the Jew like he promised that he would. Okay? It is not by grace alone. Okay? It's faith and works. Just as it was under the law of Moses. <clears throat> Singular difference here that they now have available to them a complete revelation from God. And the knowledge that Jesus Christ is their Messiah. Okay? That's why you have 144 Jewish male virgin evangelists okay, who are converted at the beginning of that period. You know, gee, all the Christians are gone. Hmm. <laughs> What's up here? Yeah, that, that, that's why this gospel track here, the tribulation map that I got for us here. Still got a bunch of them back there. In case you missed the boat, <laughs> here's what you need to do. That's exactly what happens. I mean, now I thank God that there are many sons of Abraham. Okay, I like Joshua Lee, our missionary there on Palermo. Okay. Who have trusted Jesus Christ as their sake. It's an individual salvation right now. Okay. This is why during the tribulation period, Moses and Elijah get to come back. Lucky them. <laughs> Moses said, I was dead. I was in paradise. It was quiet. I was just fine. <laughs> He is sending me back. You know? Elijah, okay? He didn't die. He got, remember, he got caught up there in the fire of the chariot, got sent back up. He, and God said, Guess what? Iggy, time to go back, man. <laughs> and they get to come back and get the heads lopped off. Okay? Moses and Elijah, what do they represent? The law and the prophets. He's dealing with Jews. Now he deals with with the Gentiles as well. No, nope, they get to come back to preach the truth. Okay, remember the Mount of Transfiguration? Who was there? Moses and Elijah. Moses and Elijah. They come back, they perform miracles. They're there to be a witness to the world. Revelation 14, 7, saying with a loud voice, what's the everlasting gospel? Fear God! And give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Who is he preaching it to? To preach to them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people. So yes, he's dealing with Israel again, but it's being offered to everybody, Jew and Gentile alike. This gospel is not just to the Jews. It's to all mankind. Okay. But there is not one word in that message of salvation by grace through faith through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Okay. Not one word. Okay, I just read to you exactly what the Bible says. So unless you're going to try to put words into that angel's mouth that aren't there. Okay? Because that's what you want it to mean and that's what they're doing. 
They're putting words, just like they try to put words in Jesus Christ's mouth, and I showed you when one time he dealt with a Gentile. Not one word about that. There's not one word of it here. And that's why I get so wound up about this stuff. Now, I don't, they can believe what they want to believe. Go right ahead. If you don't want to believe what the Bible says, that's your business. But don't expect me to sit back in silence and not challenge you, especially when you're a pastor standing up in a pulpit proclaiming the fact, well, I'm an independent, fundamental, Bible-believing Baptist. You're a liar. No, you're not. It says, fear God. Now, if you're under the law, and they're going to be under the law, then you would better have some fear of God. Okay. We ought to have fear of God now because of the mercy of the fact that we're not under the law. Okay? Faith and works. In fact, that ought to be outright terror because, yeah, they better exercise faith in what the scriptures say, but then they got to work and keep it. And if they give in and take the mark of the beast, that's it. It don't matter what you've done. It's all over for you. You've already stamped your ticket for hell. Now for the Jews, it means to keep as much of the Mosaic law as is possible to keep, both in letter and in spirit. Okay? Uh, Temple is going to be rebuilt, but they don't get to use it. The, the Antichrist has already usurped it. So they're limited in what they can do. Uh, for the Gentile, it's his conscience and keeping the Ten Commandments. Okay, The law of God written on their heart. Okay, Them that dwell on the earth, every nation, every kindred, every tongue, <coughs> every people. Fear God. Now at first they don't. Revelation 16, 9. First, they don't. They continue to be arrogant, just like they are right now. Revelation 16, 9. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. <laughs> yeah. Which kind of makes no yeah. sense. He's well, the reason they're getting scorched, right? Because of their sin. Well, and, and they're blaspheming him. Since when has humanity <laughs> made any please, sense? Come up, please stop. Brother. Please stop, God. Well, well, what happens later? I'll tell you what eventually happens is Revelation 6, 15, 16, and 17. Revelation 6, 15, 16, 17. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hit themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who shall be able to stand? Now they eventually realize then it's too late. God's pouring out all his wrath is getting poured out upon the earth. I mean, they're going to mock him. They're going to blaspheme God to a point. But when the Lord starts pouring out all his judgment on the earth, and there isn't going to be any place to run and any place. To... Back at one point, you know, when he releases the, the monsters in hell down in the pit onto the earth so that men are going to seek to die and death will flee from them because yeah. of the torment from those scorpion things from those, those locusts out of hell are so horrible, so terrible they'd rather die than endure it and they can't die <laughs> they'll try to kill themselves and it won't work God won't let them die. I mean, that's why rightly dividing the scriptures is so essential. Okay? We are dispensational in our understanding of the scriptures. 
And again, once I finish where we are in Sunday school right now, we're going to go back and we're going to review dispensations. Okay. Which the best way to do that is, again, is looking at the covenants that are in the scriptures. Okay, We're not hyper-dispensationalists. We don't chop up the Bible into a multitude of little hard lines, dated time periods that cannot be crossed. Right. Uh, God will do what he wants with it and he has and he does and again you know the example here is the fact of the gospel being transitional there in the book of Acts you can't put a hard line there they overlapped <laughs> yeah. well, without that yeah. understanding that's where you end up teaching that everyone's been saved the same way all throughout human history, which is absolutely absurd. I mean, all you got to do is read the Bible and you can understand that that's not the case. Or again, you have those who teach, you know, your hyper distance that the Lord's Supper, believers' baptism, uh, the, church, the church universal doesn't exist for us. You know, because they, you know, chopped this whole thing up. You know, uh, why their inability and unwillingness to believe what God has said. It's that simple. You cannot take the gospel of the kingdom and apply it to the church. You cannot take the gospel as it was preached by Peter from Acts one through nine. Okay. We're being preached to Jews only and apply that to the church. It's an incomplete revelation. Okay. Paul's gospel is the complete revelation okay. of God's grace to all people, Jews and Gentiles, during the church age. Now, once the church, the body of Jesus Christ, the bride of Christ, is removed from this world, okay, that body is complete. It's not complete yet. Well, like I said, they used to use the term, you know, don't hear it hardly all anymore, the church militant and the church victorious. The church militant was the church here on earth. The church victorious were those that had gone home to heaven. Okay. They're just as much a part of the body of Jesus Christ as we are. Okay. They're just done with this part of the fight. Okay. There will be no additions made to the body of Jesus Christ to the church after the rapture. Okay. The marriage supper of the Lamb occurs during the the tribulation. The people getting saved then are not part of the body of Jesus Christ. Those saints who die during the tribulation, okay, are not added to the bride. Revelation 6, 9, 10, and 11. <clears throat> and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Now we're already there. We've already been perfected. We've already gone through the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. And white robes, listen careful, and white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Okay. They do not receive glorified bodies. They were part of the body of Jesus Christ, which is already in heaven at this point. Wouldn't they receive 
glorified bodies. No. They didn't get them. Okay. The white robe. Okay, marriage supper. The lamb. 